coming back in. The Woman in the Window is a movie that is on Netflix, came out this month, and truth be told, this was a movie that was supposed to come out May of 2020. I'll never forget seeing the trailer and being very much so excited because Joe Wright, he's a very interesting director. He can go from doing like a period piece like Pride and Prejudice to then doing an art house thriller like Hannah and then also a misfire like Pan. So he's actually a director. I've ranked his work, so you guys can check that out down below. Um, I don't have, obviously, The Woman in the Window on it because that ranking video I did like a little over a year ago. But anyways, so this being a Joe Wright movie, again, I was excited for it. And also, having to wait a year, I was very much so antsy about actually sitting down to watch it. Because the premise seemed intriguing, I liked the director, and I also loved the cast. Not going to say who's in the cast other than Amy Adams, because I was surprised at the actors that were in this movie, truth be told. Um, but Amy Adams, I want to say first and foremost, she does such a good job in the lead role. I really liked her performance. She's a great actress in general, but with what she does here... It's nice. It's really good. I really liked what she was doing. Just her eyes, man. You can tell a lot through just her eyes. And I thought that was something that was really nice. Um, the other thing is I do like the fact that the cinematography in this movie is very strong. A lot of times it does pay homage to Rear Window. I mean, there's literally a scene where you do see them watching Rear Window, like the lead character. So I'm like, at least it knows, it knows that it's paying homage to Rear Window. Because, you know, I feel like sometimes the movie doesn't even know that it's paying homage to something. But this movie clearly does. There's so many scenes that are taken right from Rear Window. Um, even the lighting sometimes reminded me a lot of Rear Window. And it's nice the fact that I rewatched Rear Window recently because it's fresh in my mind. Now, I will say with The Woman in the Window, there is the production design too, which is pretty strong. Um, and I know that people are thinking, well, there's not much production design to it. But for me, I like the fact that it's a big house that is mostly the setting. But they're able to make that feel very lived in. You know, it feels very lived in by the lead character. And that's something that I think is important. So I like that a lot too. But I can't lie. That and then also the build up to the mystery and the pacing are something that I also liked because, again, I never felt like I was bored by this movie in the slightest. But that is where the positives end because overall I was I was disappointed by this movie. You know, I, I, I can't lie. I was disappointed by this movie. You know, I mentioned the cast and I'm not going to say who's in the cast besides Amy Adams, as I mentioned earlier. But what I will say is that there are actors and actresses that do appear that I was surprised were in the movie. And they're not really given that much to do. It's a shame, really. Because here's the thing. You can have a big cast of characters and have it where they're not in it for paycheck roles. And how those characters, however small they might be, they're actually meaningful. You know, I think about Knives Out, for instance. Knives Out has a huge cast. But there's not a single performance where it felt like the character, I mean, the actor playing the character was phoning it in. You never felt that. In fact, you felt like every single character in that movie was lived in. Woman in the Window, it's very different. You feel like these actors and actresses had only a day to do their scenes, and then they ran out of time because it's like, well, you know, I, I only signed up for a day, so I got to leave now. And then it's like the director, Joe Wright's like, ah, uh, what am I supposed to do with this now? That's what it felt like a lot of times, honestly, with these characters. Um, the characters themselves aren't really that well written. You know, you'll have one character that is revealed to be the villain, not going to say who, but that character's writing is so bad, in my opinion. They could have done something different, I felt like, with that. I personally would have, at least. But the way they went, it just was so headache-inducing, man. Because, you know, the villain just goes into, like, a monologue, starts screaming a bunch of exposition, trying to essentially convince the audience that this is, like, a good twist. And I, I didn't buy it for a second. I did like how some scenes were recontextualized as the film progressed. But what I didn't like is the fact that they didn't do more with that. I felt like they probably should have, because... This movie is all about perspective, you know, and I'm obsessed with perspective in movies. I really am. But they didn't do enough with it, I think. And that's the thing. A lot of this movie felt underdeveloped, which is a shame. There are some things also that just happen. You know, you'll have characters that just do stupid things just because. Cops in this movie are insanely stupid. It's really a shame because I feel like this movie is trying to treat everyone as dumb, including us as the audience. And look... I'm someone that always, almost always advocates characters doing things that are stupid and saying, well, people are stupid in general in life. Like, how many times do we meet people or have heard about people doing stupid things? A lot. Humans do things that don't always make sense, for sure. But I felt like in this movie, there was some stuff where it just felt like the plot made it where they had to do it versus you as the audience member being able to get behind the character themselves actually doing it and being able to say, yeah, 
this is something that makes sense for them to do. I feel like that's important too with movies and TV shows, but this, this movie didn't do that. The score is also very forgettable. Danny Elfman is a good composer, but the score is very forgettable. It's a shame too, because like I said, very talented individual. But I don't know, this is the thing. If you like this movie, I totally get it. I totally get why you might like this movie, especially for audiences that haven't seen Rear Window or audiences that are like, I don't feel like we're watching Rear Window. I feel like watching something that's like a modern day version. Well, here you go. This is like a modern day version, but I I, I just, I wasn't a fan of it. I, I wasn't a fan of it. I also didn't like how certain characters like lose their phone. I'm not gonna say who, but they lose their phone just while during, you know, certain things happen. And if they actually didn't lose their phone, things would have been a bit different. So I, I wasn't a fan of that either because let's face it, it's 2021, everyone has their phone always. So shouldn't say everyone, let me rephrase that. Most people have their phone on them always. So, but um, yeah, guys, again, I wasn't a big fan of the woman in the window, but I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Woman in the window for me personally, it was disappointing. I'll be giving it a two out of five star rating. So yeah, no, that's all straight. But yeah, guys, woman in the window, let me know your thoughts down below. And also check out my Joe Wright ranking video. Um, and also the updated, um, ranking of his will be on my letterbox so check that out as well but again i really do appreciate you guys watching don't forget subscription notification bell and i'll catch you guys later